This is Nick Hazemi, and I'm here with Peter Kinnett on Skype and Sundance. Hey, Nick, how's it going? It's going well. So um, the year of, uh, of uh, well, the Sundance is almost done. So what have been some um, highlights? I mean, when we started off the film festival, it was like 15 films were deemed to be queer, but it seems to have doubled in quantity and quality. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really remarkable year for films in general, but especially for for queer-oriented films. So one of the films that was quite heavily written up, in the press at least, is this documentary uh, by Robert De Niro about his father, who was gay. Yeah, I mean, that, that sort of came out of nowhere, because it's actually a short documentary, so it was playing in the shorts program, which a lot of people um, don't, <laughs> they don't go to see them just because <clears throat> it doesn't sort of fit into their schedules. But it's a 40-minute documentary that, yeah, reveals that Robert De Niro's father was gay, and. Um, sort of talks about his relationship with his son, and yeah, it's, I'm sure that it'll it'll uh, be around. What were some highlights for you that you saw and you thought were remarkable? There was a narrative film called Love is Strange, which stars John Lithgow and Alfred Molina as a couple in their um, late 60s, early 70s, who finally get married and then end up going through this you know significant financial trouble, and it's just, it's an incredible film, like, and it's definitely been um, sort of thrown around as the best film in the festival by a lot of people, um, gay or straight. The Case Against Eight is a highlight, obviously, for documentaries, and uh, the Iris Sachs film we just mentioned is another highlight. What were some other ones that you were kind of impressed by or Buzz was building about? Yeah, I mean, there's one in particular, it's from a queer filmmaker, um, C Craig Johnson, um, and it's called The Skeleton Twins, and it had a lot of buzz going into it, largely because it stars Kristen Wiig and Bill Hader of Saturday Night Live fame um, as a brother and sister. Um, and, you know, I went into it sort of expecting something funnier than it actually was. I mean, it's quite funny, but it's also a very dark and, and, uh, and moving film about two siblings who are, you know, borderline suicidal. And Bill Hader plays um, a gay man, and it's just probably my favorite performance of the whole festival. He just sort of, you really don't think he has that in him. Kristen Wiig is great too, but like, it's a true revelation. Um, what Bill Hader, who plays the uh, gay character on SNL, Stefan, that's sort of been popularized. I mean, clearly he's capable of playing very different um, kinds of gay men. And this film is just, I think a lot of people are gonna be pretty blown away by it. So Joe Magdamella from True Blood and Magic Mike has made his own documentary about uh, a strip club in Dallas, I believe, called La Bear. Yeah. Um, I didn't actually see it, um, and I, I, sometimes I forget that slam dance is sort of going on down the street, but um, then people were sort of really talking about it, and yeah, apparently it's a very sort of sexy documentary about male stripping from somebody who played a male stripper in Magic Mike, so. He knows his audience. Um, he certainly does, yeah. <laughs> what was the hottest film you saw? Uh, the hottest film I saw. I'm going to have to go with White Bird in a Blizzard. Um, Greg Araki knows how to fetishize the male body in a <laughs> pretty incredible way. And, and even though it's a lot of straight sex, um, it's really sexy straight sex. And he, um, there's a one character played by Shiloh Fernandez who plays the boyfriend of the lead character played by Shailene Woodley. And he's basically naked for the entire movie. And um, yeah, it makes good use of his remarkable body. And what's been your favorite celebrity uh, run-in? Uh, I got to interview George Takai, who's actually here with uh, uh, another queer-oriented film called To Be Takai, a lovely little documentary about him and his husband, Brad. Um, and that was, I mean, it was just kind of, he, he's a very hilarious man, and I've, and I've sort of always sort of appreciated his, his warmth, and he was very warm in person. He refused to call me Peter. He would only call me Pierre because he found out I was in Montreal. All right. Well, thanks, Peter, and go uh, recuperate. Bye. Bye.